Got another idea for building a wood gas stove. This is my old one. Uh, as you can see, the combustion chamber is pretty small and it's getting all rusty now after a few uses. The other thing is I found it was quite small and hard to get hot enough, what I thought was hot enough. So now I'm going to experiment. First try upgrading to stainless steel. So I bought this cheap uh, cup, so it's a double walled, stainless on the inside, stainless on the outside cup. Um, I had a look at the bottom, I can see it's just a screw holding it together. So if we undo the screw, then uh, if we have a look inside, now we have two layers and you can see pretty easily that if I drill a couple of holes in the bottom, drill some holes here, I've basically got the basis of a wood gas stove. Here's my cat Elmo <laughs> having a look. Um, I also like, oh I can also take the handle off pretty easily. So there's just a couple of screws holding the handle on. If you find one that takes a, uh, a metal handle then you can probably leave the handle on but this is plastic I don't think it's going to survive the heat very well. Um, now to get the air in I think the, the whole fan forced idea is much better so I still plan to use my little fan unit but I'll, um, I'll cut some kind of hole in the side because it's stainless it's a bit hard to work so maybe I'll have to just use the hole saw, the whole stepped hole drill and cut a round hole and make a bit of a transition piece on this so that it goes from square to round. But anyway, I thought I'd show you the start before I start building and we'll see how it goes, how it looks later. That worked pretty well. Um, you can see I've got the holes in the bottom and the holes at the top. So I did, um, I did eight of these 2.7 mil holes and I did 12 of these 5 mil holes around the top, uh, two centimeters down from the top edge. I've also got a bit of uh, stainless uh, mesh. This is just from a tea strainer from a two dollar shop, but stainless steel. So that'll fit in the bottom and uh, that'll just keep the wood off the air holes to try and make the air distribution as neat as possible. So that will go in there. All I need now is a hole on the side here somewhere for my air to get in. So uh, I've cut a hole here. By the way, I've been doing all these holes with these step drills so I can get a nice neat hole. That's the largest hole I can go up to though. So I'll try it at that and hopefully that will do. If it doesn't, I'll have to cut a square hole and it's going to be a bit messy. Um, so for this next test, I need a transition to go from this square to that one. I'll just use some alfoil and bend it up and hopefully that will be good enough and then we can put it together, put this in here and give it a try. So basically we'll have that, we'll have that, this will go inside, then we'll put a fan here with a some sort of transition piece to squirt it down into that small hole. Um, oh, I also have to block these holes so I'll just put a screw or a bolt or something in them for now. I'll see what I can find. Well, it's all made. I've uh, put some sticks in it ready for its first firing. So, uh, as usual, I'll put some metho on the top. Try and uh, cover everywhere with metho. Okay, that's pretty good. Then I'll put my combination pot holder and uh, flame concentrator that I made with the last one. Looks a bit sad now next to the other nice unit, but we'll uh, we'll try that. Okay, that's the way. I'll start my clock. Let that burn for 30 seconds or so. Be hard to see, it's a bit bright. OK. 
Okay, now we'll turn the fan on. Okay, looks like it's uh, starting up pretty well. I'll just move the camera around so you can see that a bit. It's a bit bright to see very much, but uh... okay. So I'll let that go for about two minutes. Looks like we're getting a bit of smoke. Might put another squirt of metho in just to make sure it's firing. So one thing I was concerned with on this design was that maybe it was a bit tall and that the air wouldn't be able to get all the way up to the top where the flames are. Anyway, we'll try putting our uh, two cups of water on and see how we go. Right, I'll leave the video there, turn it on when it's boiling. Uh, it's 12 and a half minutes or so. It started at about two and a half minutes, so that's about 10 minutes it takes to uh, reach this boiling boiling point. So it's boiling quite well now. Um, I'll have a peek inside and see what we can see. Probably can't see too much, but it seems to be doing the right thing. There was no smoke at all. I didn't see any smoke at all, so I expect the bottom of the pan should be nice and clean. I can't see any marks, so reasonably happy so far. We'll just see how long it boils for. Okay, we've been boiling for about 11 minutes now, so easily long enough to cook some rice or some pasta or that sort of thing if you were camping. Um, you can see it's still boiling very hard. No problem there. Uh, I'll have a look inside. Hard to see much at all in there, but uh, still working fine. We'll see how much longer it boils for. 15, well almost 15 minutes since it started boiling and now it's definitely slowed down. So we've pretty much used up all our useful cooking time, I think. Um, still plenty of heat if you wanted to do marshmallows or something. I'll just tip out this water. I'll have a look at the pan. So you can see we've got a couple of little black spots, but virtually no, no soot marks. So um, it looks like it's burnt quite efficiently. I'll take the lid off and just have a look inside so not sure how much you can see in there but we have a few sticks a few bits of um, charcoal sticks at the bottom so it didn't burn completely but it did burn cleanly um, there's still a lot of heat there so you can toast marshmallows for dessert or something like that but overall that was pretty easy to make the uh, the cup cost about six dollars from Target uh, if it had a slightly wider base I would have been a bit more happy um, and maybe it didn't need to be quite so tall but basically good result